Welcome everyone. Welcome to Supercharge Nonprofit Collaboration with Skype for Business. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Susan Hope Bart, and I am the online training producer here at TechSoup. We do want this presentation to be relevant to the important work you do in your communities, so we appreciate you taking the time to answer our registration questions about how much you knew about Skype for Business. This allows us to focus on topics that you need. Today you are going to have the opportunity to participate in some live polls and ask questions at the end of the presentation. We are also going to put together a document of all the questions and answers to distribute to attendees when we post this event on our webinar archive page. You will also receive that question and answer document in our follow-up email early next week. Your opinion is very important to us, so I do ask that you take that extra 15 seconds at the end of the presentation to complete our survey. That's the way we get better in helping you. I'm going to take a few seconds to talk about our platform ReadyTalk. I want to make sure everyone feels comfortable using it. In the lower left-hand side of your screen, there's a chat box. This is the place where you're going to input all of your questions. We will be flagging those questions throughout the presentation for our presenter to answer at the end. This is also where you are going to put in uh, questions if you are having technical difficulties. And we have folks on our back end that will help you with that. If you lose your Internet connection, you can reconnect using the link in your registration or reminder email. If you registered more than an hour ago, you can also access the presentation it was sent with the reminder email. There is a link on the email. If you are hearing an echo through your computer speakers or having any issues with your audio, you can dial in using the toll-free line listed in your registration email. This presentation is being recorded. You will be able to find this recording at TechSoup's webinar, webinar page in about a week. This is where we share all of our recordings and announce upcoming webinars. So check it out at www.techsoup.org slash community slash events dash webinars. You can also review other webinars we have recorded on our YouTube channel. And I mentioned you will receive an email with a link to this presentation a few days afterwards. If you are following us on Twitter, you can tweet us at TechSoup or using hashtag TSWebinars. Joining us today is Linda from our amazing partner Tech Impact. Linda manages all aspects of client relations for Tech Impact including educating nonprofits about technology solutions. She works with local, regional, and national partners to provide the nonprofit community with increased knowledge of technology through speaking engagements. She has been using Office 365 since it was first introduced and has helped over 600 nonprofits get on board with it. She says she is an obsessed bird watcher and head coach for a women's ice hockey team when not helping nonprofits get on board with cloud computing. I can tell you Linda is going to be an amazing speaker today, and she's also a super great person. Also on the back end helping us is Ali Bisbekian, who will help answer questions about technical concerns in the chat box. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about TechSoup. We're located here in San Francisco, California, and we'd like to know where you're from. We'd like you to take a minute in your chat box and tell us what city and state or what country you're joining us from. And while you're doing that, I'm going to tell you a few things about TechSoup. We're a 501c3 nonprofit like many of you joining us today. We work to empower organizations around the world to help them get the latest tools, skills, and resources to help them achieve their mission. You can see from our map here that we serve almost every country in the world. We have 62 partner NGOs around the world. We know the need is global, and we have a dedicated website for countries outside of the U.S. at www.techsoup.global. This is where folks that are joining us from outside of the country would access technology donations. So I see some of you folks are here from Minnesota. Oh, Boca Raton. It's probably nice and warm there. Scottsdale, Arizona. Denver. Uh, all, around the, all around the country. 
Great. Thank you so much for joining us today. A little bit about TechSoup Impact. We've helped organizations get more than $5.2 billion in technology products and grants to NGOs around the world. These tech products and grants come from more than 100 corporate and foundation partners. To get us started today, I have three live poll questions we're going to ask you. And they're going to be pretty painless because they're yes and no questions. So I'm going to start out with the first one. What you're going to do is answer this question. Are you using Skype for personal use today? Skype for personal use. So I'll give you 5, 4, 3, 2, I'll give you an extra second, 1. All right, I'm going to close the poll. All right, it looks like Wow, almost 60% of you are already using Skype for personal use. Great. Thank you. And the next question, are more of your staff and partners working remotely? Again, yes or no, pretty painless. This will help Linda customize her presentation. Got a lot of fast fingers here. Okay, I guess five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. So it is true. A lot of folks are working more remotely. So that's even more important why Skype for Business is something you should know more about. Excellent. Last one. Last question. Is it difficult to schedule meetings where everyone can attend in person? in your organization? Again, these were really simple, yes or no. All right. You guys are really fast today. Five seconds, four, three, two, one. All right, great. So it looks like that's true as well. It's difficult to schedule meetings where everyone can attend in person. So that's great. You guys are here for the right reason to learn all about Skype for Business. Thank you for that data. And I am going to turn this show over to Tech Impact. So Linda, take it away. Thanks, Susan. Um, yeah, that's a pretty remarkable last poll result, isn't it? Ninety-five percent of participants said it's it's difficult to schedule a meeting, um, and and it's funny because we do we spend a lot of time with our coworkers and our partners, going back and forth with email. You know, hey, are you available on you know Tuesday too? No, I am. You know, three people are, one person isn't. It's maddening, and then as we start to work more remotely like, oh, geez, do I really want to go all the way into the office today just to have that one meeting? How about if we do it you know, through the web? And that's one of the things that Skype allows us to do. So I'm going to jump into my presentation now. Um, oh, I feel like I am. Hold on. There you go. No. Using Skype for Business. So we're going to talk about Skype for Business today. There's a difference between Skype and Skype for Business. Um, and I'll, I'll hopefully be able to show you the difference between that. So just a quick word about Tech Impact. Um, we are a 501c3 nonprofit organization, um, and we're dedicated to providing services to other nonprofits. I want, to, want you to take a look at this slide and um, look down in the bottom of the V of the green part. That's Peanut, our office dog. I bring that up because in case you hear squeaking and whining in the background today, um, she's, in the office. <laughs> she's in the office with me today. So let's talk about uh, Tech Impact. So our mission is to empower communities and nonprofits to use technology to better serve our world. And restated, basically our mission is to help you meet your mission through the use of technology. We are a service provider. Um, we've been in the community and working in the community since 2003. Those of you who know the NPower network, we were um, NPower Pennsylvania up until a few years ago when we rebranded to Tech Impact so that we could serve 
um, a larger geography. So right now we're serving over 100 nonprofits nationally um, with services, uh, help desk services, and managed IT support. So um, we're, you know, really deeply engaged with, I think, somewhere around 120 nonprofits. Um, we support over 3,000 end users, so they all call into our help desk and, you know, our guys are helping them do all those crazy things that you can imagine help desk people do, like, hey, I can't print, and that kind of thing. Um, but we're also uh, a leader in Microsoft Office 365 implementations. We've done over 600 Office 365 migrations, helping nonprofits migrate their email from whatever service they have to um, Office 365, setting up SharePoint and helping set up OneDrive for Business, giving training on Skype for Business, et cetera. So um, we, we're in Microsoft's top 3% of all implementers um, in this space, and it's just because it's a simple fact. The Office 365 licensing is free for nonprofits, so it's kind of e it's an easy sell for me. That's what I do for my job. I have conversations with nonprofits about you know what they need, and I recommend solutions and strategies. So it's a pretty easy sell when I say, oh, by the way, the licenses are free. We also provide back, um, cloud backup and recovery for nonprofits, hosted voice over IP phone systems for nonprofits, and um, we do a lot of consultation work in data, manages, uh, data management services, helping nonprofits select the proper database for donors or volunteers or event management, case management, and then also doing support of those systems. And um, we're getting more and more into helping nonprofits with outcomes reporting and storytelling in that space. So that's what we do. Um, today's agenda, we're going to talk about the features that are included with Skype for Business. I'm going to do a demo of those features, talk to you about licensing options and some things that you need to do to prepare for its success. And then finally, we're going to talk about the future of using Skype for teleconferencing. So why would you want to use Skype for Business? Um, we use Skype for Business to increase attendance at meetings. You, the poll numbers showed it pretty, pretty dramatically. 95% of us say that it's difficult for us to get attendance at meetings nowadays because people are working remotely, they're on the run, they're working from home. Um, we have board meetings that we have to schedule, staff meetings we have to schedule. This is a great way to use um, technology to increase attendance at the meetings. It allows us to save time scheduling meetings, save travel time and expense so we don't have to pay people, you know, mileage and, and whatnot to come into the office for meetings. It allows us to get more significant input from our coworkers, stay connected with our remote workers and present a branded appearance when communicating. So, you know, I, I know that for myself, before we use Skype for Business for our web meetings, our internal web meetings, we would, everybody at Tech Impact would have a little favorite something. Oh, let's use WebEx, let's use LogMeIn, let's use JoinMe, let's use, you know, you know whatever it was. And participants, in the meeting weren't really sure that Tech Impact was hosting that meeting. So with Skype for Business, because it's attached to our business account in Office 365, we can present a branded um, appearance. And it lets us to be, allows everybody to be agile. And the agility comes in the form not only of um, allowing us to work from other offices, but it, we also have mobile app ability. So we can just download the mobile app onto our Android or iPhone and, you know, just work, uh, connect that way as well. And I'll show you some screenshots of that. So what's included for, with Skype for Business? Skype for Business has some components that are associated with it. Um, I'm going to, maybe I should back up and say that Skype for Business used to be called LINC, L-Y-N-C, 
Link. And Microsoft had Link available for their business users, and that Link client allowed us to do presence management, instant messaging, and some online meetings. And then Microsoft went out and bought Skype, and Skype for, and then associated Link and Skype together to create a Skype for Business. So Link is now rebranded as Skype for Business. Skype for Business allows us to do presence management. Presence management is linked to our Outlook calendar and tells us whether it shows our coworkers whether we're available or not, and shows us whether our coworkers are available for meetings or conversations or whatever. Allows us to do instant messaging, so allows us to chat with coworkers. Allows us to chat with other organizations. If your organization has Skype for Business and my organization has Skype for Business, we can chat each other. We can connect each other or federate our Skype for Business so that we can chat each other. Allows us to invite other Skype users, so personal Skype users, into um, instant messaging as well. Allows us also to do that with video chat. We conduct online meetings um, where we can share our screen, share our presentation, or um, use HD audio and video to communicate with others. And then Skype for Business also allows us to broadcast meetings over the Internet to up to 10,000 um, recipients. So this is a new feature in Skype for Business. We used to be capped at about 250 users. Um, now we, we can go ahead and broadcast meetings to up to 10,000 um, viewers. So that's pretty significant. So contact management. When we use Skype for Business, we can search um, for any contact that comes from our Outlook contacts. So I have Outlook contacts, like you know, everybody in Tech Impact shows up in my Outlook contacts. But if I use Outlook and add people to my Outlook contacts, I can then search for them in my Skype for Business so that I can communicate them through instant messaging or, or make a video conference with them, etc. I can also um, search the entire Skype directory. So the millions and millions of people who use Skype around the world, if you have a Skype um, personal account or you have a Skype for Business account, I can actually search the directory and find you and then request that um, you become a contact of mine. And then um, this red box here is showing that if you right click, there's some options that you can do. Like so when you find them, it, when you search for a contact, you find a contact, you can right click on that contact and then start an instant message, et cetera, et cetera. I'm going to demo this in a couple of minutes. Presence management. Presence management shows you that your contacts are either available or not available. I said that this was tied to our Outlook calendar. At Tech Impact, it's kind of a it's a company rule that everybody uses their Outlook calendar for everything. So this morning, unfortunately, I was at a funeral. Um, I didn't have time to put that on my calendar, but I should put that on my calendar so that I look like I'm away. Right now I look like I'm away because I'm in this meeting, which is the Skype for Business webinar. Um, so when I pull up my Skype, I can see that my different co my coworkers that are listed here have different little icons associated with their name. So for instance, Ebony shows as a green check mark. That means that she's online and available. Not only is she online and available, but if you look at the screenshot there, it's, it tells me that she's also video capable. Skype for Business knows that she's got a webcam in her computer and will let me know that she's video capable. My coworker Anna is out of the office. I know she's out of the office because she's got that little pink um, icon with the arrow. So she set her Outlook out of office message that she was out, I don't know, she's at a doctor's appointment. So she's out of the office at a doctor's appointment and unavailable. Eric, who's one of our help desk technicians, is available, but he's not going to be available for very long. And that's what that little um, yellow or gold uh, watch face or clock face is letting me know. He's available now, but 
hurry because he's soon going to be unavailable. John, my coworker John and myself are listed here as unavailable. We have red, um, the red circle. And you can see that up in the top, you see my little red circle. Lauren and Sam are both offline. That means that they don't have Skype running. So they, ha they haven't logged into their Skype for Business, and therefore we have no way to – Skype for Business has no way to reach out to their calendar and see whether they're available or not. So it just is offline. And then if I have any external um, contacts listed here that are not using the Tech Impact Skype for Business or Skype for Business that Tech Impact has federated services with, the icon is going to show presence unknown because out, uh, Skype isn't going to be able to figure out you know, wh what those people are doing. Instant messaging. Um, one of the things that we use Skype for a lot at Tech Impact is instant messaging each other. Why? Because maybe we see that, like maybe I see that um, Sam is on a, or Lauren is unavailable. She's got something on her calendar. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean that I can't chat with her. So I might be able to instant message and give her a quick, you know, question answer. Or I don't want to get into a full conversation with her on the phone or send her an email, so I instant message. Here's an example of an instant message thread that's going back and forth between my co me, me and Mark. Uh, Mark telling me, give me about 20 minutes and, and I'll get the spreadsheet. Uh, yeah, he's working on the spreadsheet, and he'll get that spreadsheet to me. So we just go back and forth like that. We can also video chat our coworkers and, and any other Skype or Skype for Business um, contact that we have. And here's a screenshot of, of me and Ebony chatting with each other, um, you know, doing video chat. Now remember, a webcam is required to do the video chat. And, um, you know, we both have the webcam, and we both try to look half decent when we're video chatting, but you know, that's another that's a topic for another day. Um, online meetings. We can do online meetings by opening our calendar in Outlook and creating a Skype for business meeting. You'll see the little red circle. I have the Skype for Business um, button highlighted there in that screenshot. And then once I click that button, what happens is it puts that Join Skype Meeting link right into the calendar appointment. So as a, a meeting organizer, if I'm organizing the meeting, I must have Skype for Business installed on my computer. I must have Skype for Business open, and I must be logged in to Skype for Business. Once I, am, once I have all of that, require, uh, that prerequisite done, when I launch my Outlook calendar and say create a Skype for, for business meeting, it puts that link right in there. And then I invite people. I can invite coworkers. I can invite people who have Skype for business. I can invite people who have Skype. I can invite people who never knew what Skype was before and just invite anyone and everyone in the world. As long as they have an email address, I can invite them. I click send. That message goes out, and then when they want to join the meeting, they simply have to click that link there that says Join Skype Meeting, and they join. They do not need to be Skype for Business um, users to join the meeting. The only person that needs to be a Skype for Business user is the meeting organizer. And again, we'll demo that for us. Um, I'm going to go to the next thing here. Um, yep. When we join a Skype meeting, we're going to be asked about audio options. You, you can use Skype for Business. If you've got a speaker that works in your computer um, and a microphone in your computer, you can use the Skype for Business um, audio. If not, you're going to ask the meeting organizer to call you at a particular number and put that phone number in there. Or no audio. Sometimes we do Skype for Business and there's really no audio required because it's just a PowerPoint presentation. Um, so that phone number means the organizer has to call you on a particular phone number. Oops. Um, 
You can also share your screen. This is where the web meeting actually gets in play here. Sharing your screen with Skype for Business, um, and again, I'm going to demonstrate this in a, in a couple of minutes. The organizer can share the screen or give the participant, any of the participants in the meeting, the ability to share the screen. So any participant in the meeting can request to share their screen, and the meeting organizer can give that control over to a participant, which really makes interactive meetings work, work well. I mentioned before um, the agility, the, the ability or agility of Skype for Business. We can use it from literally anywhere. If you've got a cell phone, if you've got a smartphone, you can download the mobile app. And in that mobile app, you're going to be able to chat, video chat, um, and do some, some pretty cool things right from your smartphone. But if you take a look at the very first, um, there's five screenshots on this slide that you're looking at now. The very first one on the left-hand side is Skype for Business. You notice that it's a white background with the logo, the Skype logo. That's my Skype for Business app. If you look at the one that has the big red X on it, you know, the big red uh, Ghostbusters thing on it, that's Skype. That's not what we're going to use when we want to do um, when we want to do Skype for Business. So if you're searching your app store, it's pretty important that if you're a Skype for Business user that you download and install the Skype for Business app on your phone and log into it rather than your Skype. And then you'll see the others are just screenshots of things that you can do with the mobile app like search your contacts, create instant messages, and video chat. <coughs> Okay. Um, Susan, I'm going to pause here and ask you if you're getting any questions that I might want to address before we dive into the demo. Great. Thanks. Um, we have a couple. Um, can you talk a bit more about broadcast meetings? Is that a recording of a meeting that's played back or is it live? Sure. That's going to be a live meeting. In order to do a broadcast meeting, there, there are some technical components that are, are required, like um, it's called an Azure Media Connection through the Internet. So it's a little bit more complicated to get it set up, but then once it's set up, and you're going to need somebody like an IT department type person to help you get that broadcast meeting set up. But once it's set up, it is a live meeting, and it goes out to up to 10,000 participants. And the reason that you need that intermediary um, uh, Skype, it's called a Azure Media Server, is, and that's a service that you would have to somehow either have or, or, or have access to or purchase, um, is because the Skype in and of itself and your um, connection to Skype and Internet connection would never be able to handle that kind of, of um, volume. So that's why you need that. Great. Um, another question, you demonstrated how to use Outlook um, to request uh, or, or to schedule a meeting. Someone is asking what if they use Google, a Google Calendar or other calendaring systems. How would that work? If people are using Google Calendar, the presence management is not going to, uh, in Skype is not, for business is not going to work. And they are not going to be able to use their Google Calendar to schedule the meeting, they would have to go into Skype for Business Client and schedule the meeting that way because there's not a connection there. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, another question is what about iPads? How does Skype for Business work on iPads? So Skype for Business, again, you can download the app. There's an app for Skype for Business, and you can go ahead and download that. If you're, if you're a licensed Office 365 user, you can download Skype for Business on any of the mobile devices, so iPad or tablet or Android or iPhone, doesn't matter. Same app. Okay. okay I, see one, one. I, see a question, I see a question in here, Susan, about uh, connecting Skype users with Skype for business accounts and having mm -hmm. difficulty do, doing that, right? So I mentioned earlier 
that you, the ability to um, federate your Skype for Business with other organizations that are working with Skype for Business, or using your Skype for Business to connect to Skype personal accounts is possible. Um, we're going to send out a link in the follow-up email that's going to give you the instructions required to make that happen. There's a couple of things that need to be done, including um, I get a question about I get questions about this from organizations that are using uh, voice over IP phone systems, and sometimes the voice over IP um, gateway or router that they're using has the ability to do this blocked. So there's some like ports that would have to be open or DNS record changes that would need to be made as well. So again, we're going to send a link out um, to answer that question. Any others? Uh, let's just take one more and then save the rest for the end. Um, how do you get Skype for Business? Is it free with Office 365? It is. It's free for, with Office 365, and I actually have a slide about it. So after the demo, we'll jump into um, showing that. All right, I'm going to try to <laughs> I'm going to try to share my screen with the Ready Talk. Tell me if you can see my outlook. Is everybody seeing my outlook? It's up. Okay. If Susan's seeing it, that means other people are seeing it. All right, great. So um, we at Tech Impact, we have been using Office 365 for five years. Back before it was Office 365, it was called BPOS. Um, we're pretty hardcore Microsoft um, Office users. So I'm going to first pull up my Skype for Business account. So what you should be seeing is my Skype for Business account um, on my screen. And again, we talked about presence management. We talked about contact management and presence management. So the contacts that you see on my screen right now are mostly, they're all my coworkers, and they're in my favorites group. So what I do is I have, you know, particular coworkers that I work with often and I want to um, go ahead and use Skype with a lot, so I add them to my favorite section. Um, you'll also see that we've set up a Skype group, and my Office 365 administrator set up a Skype group called Help Desk. And people that are in the Help Desk group, but right now there's only John, but John's in the Help Desk group, and he's part of, I, you know, part of, also part of my favorites. So he's going to show up twice. Other contacts is a group that are outside of our Office 365 um, uh, for uh, Office 365 realm. So these are people who are um, Skype users or Skype for Business users, but not part of the Tech Impact Skype for Business. So I'm going to take a uh, just show you how to find someone. So there's two ways to find someone in um, Office 360 or um, Skype for Business. So if I wanted to find someone in, uh, yeah. So I'm going to type in uh, Mark just to demonstrate what I showed you on this thing. So I'm using Skype for Business, and I'm in the search bar here, and I'm typing in Mark. As soon as I start to type something into the search bar, it starts to pull up everybody from, you see that it's searching my contacts. Mark, there's a guy named Mark that works for Squidwire. He's a wiring guy that we use to, you know, pull, you know, Ethernet wiring and that kind of stuff. Mark Erickson, presence unknown. Why? Because he doesn't work for Tech Impact. He works for Bicycle Colorado, and we don't know, you know, so I can't see his um, Outlook calendar, so I don't know if he's available or not. Mark Lieberman, very good. Um, very great, great, really great guy. But here's one, Alicia, Alicia Dennis Leone. Her name's not Mark. Why does she show up? 
because she's in mid mark et evolve so anything with m a r k in it is going to show up here, and this is from my contact list. I'm going to do another one. I'm going to do Susan. All right, so Susan, here's all the Susans in my contact list. But what I want to do is I want to search for Susans in the Skype directory. So, so I'm going to look for Susan Hope Bard, who is our host for today. And so I'm typing, I'm clicking on Skype directory, and I know that Susan's Skype name is Susan.Hope.Bard. There she is. So it's all the millions and millions of Skype. This is Susan's personal Skype account. So all of you that are joining the webinar today, feel free to. I'm kidding. <laughs> Susan, I'm kidding. Um, so here's Susan Hope Bard. Once I find her in the Skype directory, what I can do is I right click on her name, and I'm going to add her to either my favorites or my other contact group list. So I'm going to add Susan to the favor. Favorite, and what happens is as I add Susan to my Skype contact list, it's going to notify me that they've sent Susan a contact request. So on Susan's computer now, she's got a, a request that Linda wants to add you to Skype. And then if, if she accepts it, she'll show up in my list. She'll show up in my favorites list um, as either you know as available or presence unknown. And then I can go ahead and right click on her and do things like send her an instant message and or start a video call or any of those things that I can do with Skype for Business. So um, I also have queued up my coworker Sarah. So Sarah knows that she should be getting an instant message from me. I'm going to say, hey, are you? Are you on the deadline? So this is as easy. Oh, look! <laughs> One of the participants wants to add me to my to his Skype list, so that's great. So I just instant message Sarah, and I asked her if she's on the webinar, and she said that she is. And I'm going to say, great, let's video chat. So we're going to video chat with her. It's so easy to video chat with Sarah. Once I'm in a conversation with Sarah, I'm going to look at the bottom of my screen, and there are three things that I can do down here. I can do a video call, an audio call, or share my screen or present my screen to her. So what I'm going to do now is start my video call. There's me. Hi, this is live. And let's see if I can get that light out of the background. So this is me. It's my funeral attire. I'm going to click on Start Video. And if you can hear my screen, what's happening is it's ringing Sarah. And there's Sarah. Hi, whose office are you in today? Who's o I'm sorry, whose office are you working out of? Uh-oh. She put me on hold. <laughs> She's probably getting herself together. I can hear you. That's all right. Oh, you're in the Delaware office today. Okay, great. So Tech Impact has an office in Delaware. You can see that I'm working in my home office now. Um, so Sarah and I are video chatting. We both have webcams on our computers, and we both have speakers and microphones. And Sarah, you're wear you're wearing he uh, earbuds. I was Yeah. So you're not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. So normally I use earbuds too. I'm on my headset because I've called into the Ready Talk. All right. Great. Thanks for uh, playing along. Oh, you know. Uh, hold on. I'm going to share my screen with you today. Okay. Okay. So. Sarah and I are video chatting. I want to share my screen with her. I'm going to use this present button down at the bottom here. I can present my whole desktop. I can present specific 
programs, most often, I mean, Microsoft gives you this option that says present your PowerPoint file because we know that most often when we're doing an online meeting, we're going to have a PowerPoint presentation of some sort to share out. So let me see if I can join, let me see if I can share out a PowerPoint presentation with you. So I'm opening up a PowerPoint presentation. I'm going to go into my OneDrive presentations folder and I'm going to open my Skype for Business webinar. Alrighty. Great. Sarah, tell me when you can see PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you can see from in ReadyTalk, if you can see what's happening is my PowerPoint presentation is loaded, and I have me and Sarah on tiny little video things in the bottom corner there of the screen. And then once it loads up, it's going to show the PowerPoint presentation to Sarah. And I can also things like give Sarah control so that she can share something from her desktop to me. So this is one way that, we, that Sarah and I can jump into an impromptu web meeting just by connecting using Skype for Business, starting with a video chat or an instant message, and then presenting my screen. So here's the screen that I'm presenting. Sarah, you're seeing the, the opening slide now? Great. And then I can just, you know, forward through that presentation. Super. All right. Thank you for playing along. I'm going to stop presenting and drop the video call. Bye-bye. Um, All right. So that's using Skype for business. Um, need to leave? Yes. So I'm going to close the Skype meeting. I hope. There we go. So I've closed the Skype meeting with Sarah. Um, so this is just how we can interact really quickly to um, any of the contacts that we have listed in our contact list. Now, we, her, Sarah and I went back and forth for a couple of minutes with instant messaging and video chat. This little um, clock face here, if I click on that clock face, what it's going to show me is it's going to show me a list of all the conversations that I've had um, with you know, whoever because it saves the conversations in my list. So it tells me that I had a video call with Sarah at 2.43 p.m. today in, uh, with Mark Mason. I chatted with him back and forth to say, hey, I'm on a webinar. Um, he says, I don't understand the invitation you sent me. That's because I sent him an invitation that just as a demo, um, and so on and so forth. As a an Office 365 administrator, you have the ability to make sure that all of these are saved in a repository so that you can use them in the future if um, you know anything's ever called into question. So that's our conversations list. I also can see anything on my calendar. So this little calendar icon, if I click on that, it shows me what I have coming up today. So I have a 3 o'clock appointment to talk about Share, SharePoint and OneDrive coming up. So that's Skype and, and some, some of the cool things that you can do with Skype. I use Skype in um, for people outside of my organization so that I can do regular calls or video calls and not incur in, um, long distance charges, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to jump into my Outlook now. And here's my Outlook um, calendar. So let me show you my Outlook calendar and all the crazy stuff that I have. Um, so if I want to create a Skype for Business meeting and invite people to that meeting, I'm just going to, you know, pick a pick a time and I can come right up here and say, you know, new Skype meeting. So I click on that and it launches and again, we I showed this kind of in a um 
in a PowerPoint slide that you'll get. Um, so I can in invite Sarah to a meeting. I can invite Susan to a meeting. I can invite my I can invite anyone that uh, I want to the meeting. Because I clicked on that Skype meeting, what it ha what it does is it puts in this link here, join Skype meeting. And the Skype meeting can happen from 4.30 to 5 today. And then all I need to do is click send. And then Sarah and Susan will both get an invitation to join the, to join my Skype meeting. This is the way you want to do it if you want to prepare a meeting. Um, again, for your board or your staff or whoever, you want people to be able to jump in and do um, um, uh, project. Um, overview, right? So I want to talk about the project that we have coming up and show a PowerPoint or get a working session together or whatever. Also really good to um, use OneNote. If you're a OneNote user, um, using Skype for Business and OneNote together saves that conversation. And you can also use OneNote and collaborate and do that kind of a thing. So when I type, when I do that meeting invitation, here it is on my calendar. And it says that it's a Skype meeting. So I know that it just reminds me that it's a Skype meeting. So if I open that up, it says the location, Skype meeting. So that's using Skype for business to connect to a meeting. All right, I'm going to stop sharing my desktop now. I think. Um, I'll stop sharing my desktop. There we go. And then hopefully you can see the PowerPoint presentation. A couple of ex a couple of things I want to talk about and then I want to stop and, and get some more questions in here. So in order to get Skype for Business, there are um, four licenses available to nonprofits in Office 365. So you can use the Business Essentials, Business Premium, E1, or E3 licensing. All of these come with the ability to use the Skype for Business client. Um, and, and it's uh, free. You know, it's free if you get the Business Essentials or the E1. Um, and what you need to do is go into your Office 365 software settings and download the client, the Skype for Business client, if you haven't already. Um, once you've done that, there's a couple of things that you need to do to prepare for success. One of them is you need to change DNS records. So your DNS records that need to be changed are SRV and TXT records to allow Skype for Business to send through those instant messages and video chats and allow um, outside participants to interact with you using Skype for Business. Um, like I said, download and install the client. Make sure that your desktop is configured properly. And that just means that it has to be, um, you should really be using Microsoft Office 2013 or higher in order to get the best use of all of the components that come with Office 365, including Skype for Business. And then provide user training. Um, the user training can come in the form of formal training. So you, you know, if you're the IT administrator, you can you know, get everybody together and show them how to install the client and show them how to use things. But more and more often, um, I did a webinar with a co-presenter from Save the Children and at Save the Children, what he's done is he's gotten people to, um, at, in groups, just, hey, you know what? Somebody start a Skype meeting, put a Skype meeting on the calendar, and share out your favorite recipe with your coworkers. So it's kind of a fun thing to do. Um, you know, somebody puts a one PowerPoint slide together and shares a recipe for their favorite whatever it could be, a, you know, a food item, a dessert, or a cocktail even. Um, and then make sure that everybody can see the presentation, hear the presenter, um, instant message each other. So it's kind of a fun way to engage. You would want to do that before you had a deadline like, oh my gosh, our board meeting's coming up on Friday. It's now Wednesday at, you know, 
whatever, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And by Friday, I have to figure out how to get the board members to use Skype, right? Connecting to voice communication, I get a lot of questions about when can, you know, so that's great. Can I just dial somebody's phone number from right, right within Skype? The answer is no. Right now you cannot call a standard telephone line. So there's no interconnection to me being able to open Skype and dial somebody's cell phone number and have the, you know, have their cell phone ring. It is coming. Um, this is one of the reasons that Microsoft purchased, you know, a lot of these different technologies is to make that integration happen. So you will be able to make and receive calls from Skype for Business, add dial-in conference lines. So if I wanted to use Skype for Business but not use Skype Audio, I could put a conference call, I put, could put a conference line in there and have everybody using the conference line instead. Um, in order to make that happen, you're going to use an E5 license. So there's such a thing as an E5 license. Right now, the price of an E5 license is pretty significant. I think it's $35, $35 per user per month. Um, we're hoping that our friends at Microsoft Citizenship Team are going to be able to knock that price down so that it would be more affordable for us to have. So for those of you who want to know about using um, Skype to make phone calls, please hang in there because we think that that is absolutely coming. Um, if you need help, we'd be happy to help you set this kind of stuff up. If you're not on Office 365 and you want to get on Office 365, feel free to reach out to me and pick my brain and ask me questions about it, and you know we can certainly help you do that. At Tech Impact, we do biweekly webinars. So check out techimpact.org slash events. Go to our calendar, and we're always doing Office 365 topics. So that will really help you. Okay, Susan, uh, the presentation is done. We have about seven minutes left. Are there questions that I haven't gotten to? There sure are. Let's uh, take the first one up here. Is Skype HIPAA compliant? All of Office 365 is HIPAA compliant. Um, Microsoft has a lot of information in their Trust Center. So if you just go online and look up Microsoft Trust Center, it will bring you to a link for the Office 365 Trust Center. And you can um, you really need to read all about that and understand how your use of Office 365 is it needs to be you know done in a particular way to continue to, to, to meet those HIPAA requirements. But the platform itself is HIPAA, is HIPAA compliant. Thank you. Um, if I if I'm understanding this next question correctly, the person is asking if you can share your desktop with a regular Skype user or a personal Skype user, and can they share their desktop with a Skype for Business? So could the two programs communicate? Mm -hmm. So if you set up a Skype for Business meeting and share your desktop out then you're sharing your desktop out with whoever is in the meeting, regardless of whether they have Skype, Skype for Business, or don't even know what Skype is. So yes. Okay, and then you Great. can give them control as well to share their screen out. Okay. Um, can several meeting participants be on the screen at the same time? In other words, while they're talking, can they see each other? Yes, you can video chat with as many um, meeting participants as you want, and everybody gets their own little box down at the bottom of the screen. And how many people can participate in those types of meetings? Um, up to 250, but honestly, you know, it, it, it's dependent on your, you know, everybody's internet connection and that kind of thing. So you don't, you don't want to, you know, test the limits of that on an important meeting. Let's put it that way. Thanks. Uh, do you have to be a Microsoft Office 365 user to use Skype for Business? Um, I believe so. I, I'm not sure if you can purchase – well, let me put it this way. For nonprofit pricing, yes. 
if you uh, you might be able to go and just go to Office 365 and purchase Skype for Business as a standalone. But I mean, why would you if you're using you know if, if Office 365 is free licensing, why would you do that? Thanks. Um, what about if you send a Skype for Business invitation from your Outlook calendar to a non-Skype user? Do they get a link and do they have to download some plugins in order for them to attend the Skype for Business meeting? Yes and yes. Okay. Is Office 365 available for Mac? Yes. Excellent. And, Skype, and there's a Skype for Business client as well. Okay. Um, would there ever be a need for folks to have multiple platforms like GoToMeeting, um, ReadyTalk, and Skype for Business? Yes. So um, Skype for Business is, is great if you want to um, do a meeting, uh, like a, a regular business meeting. The meeting organizer can record that meeting, and that recording right now is stored on their local machine. And the, 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 the meeting organizer would have to figure out how to get that recording stored somewhere you know, for future use. So oftentimes, like for instance, TechSoup uses ReadyTalk as their platform because of the ability because of these other abilities that it has, like the ability to record the session and store it online immediately and have access to it, um, you know, ha allow participants to have access to it on um, you know kind of a, a more public platform. Also allows you to um, do like the connection to the voice and there's an attendant that we use on the back end of ReadyTalk that helps us get the audio set up and you know, counts us down and, and is monitoring the quality of the voice and that kind of stuff. Skype for Business doesn't have that. So if you're in the business of doing webinars like TechSoup is, then you probably would maybe want to investigate another platform like WebEx or ReadyTalk or something like that, in addition to Skype for Business, which is free, right? So ReadyTalk is not free. TechSoup pays for that, some, you know, whatever it is. WebEx is not free. We pay for the use of WebEx as well. So we would only want to pay for those things when needed and then use Skype for Business for our regular meetings, our regular business meetings. Great. Um, for, for all of us out here that don't have Skype for Business yet, what it, how hard is it to set up or install? Um, it's relatively easy to set up and install once you have Office 365 licensing. Um, again, it's pretty simple, straightforward for the user. Download the Skype, Skype for Business client. Um, there, and again, if you want to interact with external contacts, people from other organizations that have Skype for Business set up, you're going to have to do things like uh, those, those DNS records and uh, federated services. And again, there's a link that we're going to send out with instructions on how to do some of that stuff. So on the back end, there might be some technical setup that has to be done. But, but as an example, at Tech Impact, if you want to get on Office 365 and you want to pay Tech Impact to help you get that set up, we do three projects. We do email conversion, OneDrive for Business setup, and SharePoint setup. We don't do – there's the project for Skype for Business isn't big enough for us to actually do a project for it. Great. I'm going to take one last question because we're approaching the end of the hour. Um, is nonprofit pricing available for government entities? No. Government pricing is available for government entities. So if you, if you are a .gov, you're going to have to go through your purchasing and find out how to get your pricing for Office 365. There's an academic or educational pricing. So if you're a, um, a, a K through 12 school, you're going to go through and buy, instead of E1 licenses, you're going to get A1 licenses. But the pricing is pretty, straight, pretty, pretty much the same. 
great. Um, we have reached the end of our time. There are still a few more questions that haven't been answered. So what we'll do is we're going to collect those questions, and we will answer those in the question and answer document that will be sent out and will also be posted to our archives. So for those of you that we didn't get your questions, don't worry. We'll get to them. And we'll just do that in writing, and you can also reach out to us. And if, if you need something else, you can reach out to me here at TechSoup, and we'll get, your we'll get your questions answered. So just very quickly, I know some of you were, were kind of rounding up that hour. In the chat box, we want to know one thing you learned in today's webinar from Linda, or one thing you're going to try to implement. Before you jump off, if you could take just 10 seconds to type that in. Great. A lot of people have really enjoyed this presentation. And know that you can have a lot of people on some of the features in Skype for Business. As you're, as you're still type, typing in the things that you learned, I do want to promote a couple of upcoming webinars because January is our month for grants and fundraising. You really need to come to our next three webinars. Tomorrow we've got one on GrantStation. This is your one-stop shop for fundraising. They're great folks. They're great presenters. And tomorrow, same time, at 11 a.m. Pacific, you can get to know GrantStation. They're going to take you through a tour of their website and show you all the really great tools they have for your use as a nonprofit. And then on the 20th, we have another presentation on strategic fundraising tips. And on the 21st, we follow it up with another grant-seeking webinar. So we do want you to join us for some of our other presentations. You can go on our website and check all those out, or you can click on the links that are in your presentation or that you will get on Monday. And also very quickly, we do have a special offer coming up at the end of this month on January 26th and 27th, which is a discounted one-year membership for $99. That's $200 less than the regular discounted fee and $600 less than retail. So for those of you folks that are interested in a GrantStation subscription, this is um, a link for you that you can go to on the 26th and 27th. We also want to give a shout out to ReadyTalk, our webinar sponsor. Um, a huge thank you to Linda. Linda, thank you so much for your time. And to Allie on the back end answering uh, some of your technical questions. Um, you guys that are jumping off now, I'm going to ask you a huge favor and take the time to do the survey that will pop up. I know it will take you about 30 seconds to a minute. But this is, helps us here give you the tools and training you need. So give us that feedback so we can continue to do that. So thank you. Everyone have a great rest of your day or evening. And hopefully we'll see you on tomorrow's webinar. Bye-bye.